why is everyone listening to GlobalTalkRadio.com? Because it's the future of talk radio. Every day, more and more people are finding Internet Radio as not just an alternative media, but as a replacement to traditional AM and FM broadcast stations. Internet Radio offers a wider variety of programs, convenient on-demand listening that meets your schedule, and fewer commercial interruptions. And GlobalTalkRadio.com is already leading the way by matching this content with a highly targeted Internet audience. GlobalTalkRadio.com offers its listeners one of the widest programming varieties on the Internet, from business and finance to self-improvement, paranormal, health, literature, romance, politics, and more. There are also opportunities for prospective hosts who would like to host their own weekly or one-time talk shows. Want to learn more? Check us out at www.globaltalkradio.com and see the future of talk radio today. You're listening to globaltalkradio.com. The following program is provided for informational purposes only. The views and opinions expressed during the show do not necessarily reflect those of the station or the host. There are no guarantees to the information presented in this material, and the claims and results of any cannot be guaranteed. As always, you should consult with a professional before making any decisions that may impact your legal, financial, and medical well-being. And now, the best of Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome. Are you ready to take a journey with me into knowledge, enlightenment, and discovery? Then let's journey again together. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome to the show, and what a phenomenal guest we have tonight. His name is Raymond E. Fowler. He's actually the author of many, many books, but what we are here to talk to him about tonight is his new book called Synchrophile. It's Amazing Personal Encounters with Synchronicity and Other Strange Phenomena. I don't know how many of you out there might wake up at a specific time like 111 or 222 or 333 in the morning. We are going to be talking um, extensively with Raymond Fowler about what synchronicity and synchrophile is. But first, as I do each and every week, I have lots of announcements. You know, it's the beginning of the year coming up, 2005. We have so many new things going on. I wanted to give you all those announcements. So I'll direct you to my website, journeyswithrebecca.com. Um, I, before I forget, you know, one of my favorite segments that I do is the email um, segment, which I get questions in from the mailbag. So write to me, mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. I'd be happy to answer your questions for you, and then we'll either post them on the website or we will record them here on the show, and you can get the answers to those questions that you've been wanting to ask. I um, also want to thank my sponsor, Fate Magazine. Please go to their website, fatemag.com, or you can also click on the link at the bottom of the page there uh, to go, or in the middle of the page, to go to their website. The 2005 Fate Magazine calendars are out. They're fantastic, spectacular. So if you've forgotten to get yours, please do that now. Also would like to direct you to Spirit Talk um, over on the bottom left of, I'm sorry, bottom right of the website. Click on that um, that link for Spirit Talk. There's lots of good information there. Um, let's see. There's some other things I know I was supposed to be talking about here just a moment. Um, oh, the change. Yes, I will be moving to Thursday evenings, 8 p.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time. That's real easy for me to say. Again, that'll be Thursdays in January at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. And for those of you who are still on the website, if you will look down at the bottom of the page there, you will see the icon for White Noise, the movie that is coming out in January 7th, I believe it is. And I'd like to direct you to that for just a moment because this is an extraordinary movie. I'm so excited to be able to watch it. Um, it's about EVPs, Electronic Voice Phenomena. It stars Michael Keaton. And I'm just going to read a little bit. Is EVPs is the process through which the dead communicate with the living through household recording devices, such as digital um, or even old tape machines. So those are available. But Michael Keaton's uh, role in this is absolutely phenomenal. Please go and look at the trailer. Uh, the beginning of the movie actually opens up with um, true EVPs that's been recorded by other people. Um, so there may be a lot of um, Hollywood in this movie, but there's also a great amount of truth in it. So I hope that you go to see it. I'm going to go see it when it comes out, and then I'll be talking about that later on in the shows. And hopefully we can get somebody on to talk about EVPs, too, as well. Um, but let's get back to my guest for tonight. Um, again, his name is Raymond E. Fowler. I'd like to dra- direct you to his website. And that's HTTP, and then it's, of course, the uh, colon and the two forward slashes, 
RaymondFowler.CJB.net. Of course, you can also just click onto it from my website. Um, he is actually an acclaimed UFO researcher. He's internationally known investigator of the paranormal, New York Times bestseller, author of 11 books, former director of investigations for MUFON, and MUFON is the Mutual UFO Network and also former scientific associate for the Center for UFO Studies. Mr. Fowler is an extraordinarily fascinating man who has led an extraordinarily fascinating life. Uh, tonight what we're going to be talking about is Synchrophile, his new book. Uh, during the course of Mr. Uh, Fowler's um, recordings, if you will, his investigations of the UFO, he also kept several other journals in regards to other phenomena that he was experiencing over and above the UFO phenomena, and one of them is called synchronicity. He's going to be talking um, extensively about it. He is going to be sharing some of his own personal stories as well as other people's true stories about what synchronicity is. We both have our ideas about it. We'll be discussing that at length in regards to um, synchronicity and synchrophile, but please go to his website. Check out all the books. Um, he is one of the most... Um, renowned, um, I would call him renowned specialist or certainly expert in regards to the UFO thing, and um, he is absolutely brought up a wonderful subject matter with synchronicity, so please stay tuned and we'll be right back with more of Journeys and Raymond. Schedule your private psychic reading with Rebecca, a truly gifted, intuitive, and clairvoyant, and the host of Journeys with Rebecca radio show. Call 1-888-958-2768. That's 1-888-958-2768. Where will your life's journey take you? Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Today's very special guest is Mr. Raymond Fowler, who today we're going to be talking about his latest book called Synchrophile, Amazing Personal Encounters with Synchronicity and Other Strange Phenomena. Ray, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Rebecca. Oh, this is absolutely fun, fun, fun for me. Now, I'm going to tell everyone the statement that I talked to you about off the airs. As I was reading your book, I was giggling through most of it. And it's not because this book is a book on comedy. It's a book because I was giggling because I could relate to the synchronicity and all of the things that you were talking about. And I really thought that this would make a really good show because, you know, it happens to so many people. We have different terms that we use for these moments of synchronicity. Um, oh, that was coincidence or that was pretty strange. And, you know, and people, it happens and they don't pay attention to those subtler, subtler points in life. And, um, you're, you know, we're, I think we'll go through this little chapters, you know, as we go through and we kind of flow through the book because I've already related a few of your, you know, my experiences that I've had with with synchronicity, and um, I thought we'd just kind of take it from there. But what made you decide to go ahead and write a book about synchronicity? I know it's part of all the work that you've done. You, you, by the way, very, your, your writing is fabulous, so I do recommend this book to anybody. Yes, of course, the, uh, the first ten books were on unidentified flying objects and some paranormal phenomena such as near-death experiences. But during my lifetime, my life has been full of these uh, amazing coincidences and uh, I would mention them from time to time in the other books, but uh, I would say well over a decade ago, I thought that I would uh, discipline myself and record every one that happened by date. And then after uh, maybe 10 years, 12 years, uh, I would uh, examine and analyze these and see what I could come up with, see if I could learn something from them. And it was amazing what did come out of them, especially the counter coincidences. So I thought, well... Uh, I've written 10 books on UFOs, and I have all of this material, and I'm sure that there are people out there who are interested in synchronicity. And, uh, you know, perhaps I can get feedback from people who read the book and so forth and uh, share ideas and so forth. So that's what I did, and some amazing, uh, I would call them revelations, uh, came out of uh, that particular study. Well, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about um, how you arrived at putting this together. You know, you in your book... One of the things that I really related to was the, um, you know, the whole Jungian philosophy, I guess, or theory or works. Um, I took some psychology classes years and years ago, and I was I was very closely um, could connect with the Jungian type of psychology, although I don't necessarily believe 100%, but I believe he was on to something. 
But, you know, being in the time frame in which he was born in, too, he was limiting. You know, the world was it was certainly a different place than it is today. So it was kind of limited in its thought processes. But, you know, he was he was pretty uh, revolutionary there. Um, he was, yes. And he almost didn't. He had to publish some of the things that uh, he was finding out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, you know, and, and what's interesting is, you know, he was, you know, directly working um, with, with you know, other theorists. I'm going to put it that way because really, you know, psychology is really a theory of how our mind works. We don't have necessarily a whole lot of scientific proof. But I think your book, by the way, does put together this whole synchronicity and the collective unconsciousness and personal unconsciousness and, you know, those whole theories. I think it kind of marries some of these thought processes together. Um, as I was reading your book, um, I was I was really thrilled that you brought in all of those different aspects of the Jungian and the whole psychology behind it and where it comes from. And um, when when it all is said and done, though, when somebody is done with the book, Ray, what would you? What's your personal belief on this whole thing with in relationship to the Jungian theory? Do you think that he was onto something? Because I do. Well, the collective unconscious, there are so many different similarities in people's uh, dreams uh, and uh, uh, ideas and so forth that seem to come from uh, a uh, a uh, one place that we're all attuned to. And I thought that was extremely uh, interesting. He calls them archetypes, for example. Um, I, kn- I knew nothing about Jung except maybe uh, some psychology courses I took in college. But before I decided to write the book, I thought to myself, well, he was the one who termed this uh, word uh, synchronicity. I'd better start the book uh, and say just a little bit about his life and uh, uh, and uh, sort of uh, introduce people to him and uh, what he believed in a, in a very summarized uh, layperson's uh, uh, way, and then go into uh, the uh, synchronicities in my life. Well, let's talk about um, let's talk about synchronicity. Um, let's talk about the definition of synchronicity. Um, of course, Carl Jung just had a very simple uh, definition of it. Uh, he called it an archosal meaningful coincidence. Of course, archosal means that uh, there seems to be no natural cause. Uh, these are highly improbable. But he also said that they had to be meaningful to the person that experienced them. And uh, he called the phenomenon that came out of this meaning, uh, numinosity, I believe, he, this, this is the emotional glow or fascination that comes when you have one of these experiences. And uh, these, this numinosity also comes out of other strange experiences, uh, religious experiences, uh, near-death experiences, uh, UFO experiences. And because people have these experiences, they sort of mold their personality and their worldview. Uh, and then he used the term uh, individuation. And this was to describe... Uh, the psychological process that uh, the person is experiencing, how he integrates uh, uh, the unconscious contents into the conscious, uh, helping him to make a, become a whole individual. Uh, and this is exactly what happens to me when I have these experiences of synchronicity, this numinosity. It, it gives me the feeling that I'm doing the right thing in the right place uh, at that particular time. And now, looking back in retrospect, it also seems as that I'm being schooled by something other during these uh, casual manifestations that they're teaching me something. And, and this is the reason I put together this book. I thought, well, if I put all of these together and study them afterwards, what what are they saying to me? So uh, yeah, my the, the thesis that, that I propose in the book is that paranormal phenomena, whether it be uh, UFOs or synchronicity, uh, psychokinesis, uh, poltergeist phenomena, near-death experience, uh, may all be just different manifestations of one metaphenomenon, that they're all different expressions of another reality that is parallel with our reality and uh, leaks through from time to time. Okay, two two interesting things there I, I, I want to yak about with you. First of all is um, the um, whole premise of this you feel like that you're doing the right thing when you experience these moments of synchronicity. And I have to agree with that. When I, when I, I myself is, have experienced this, most people, if they really thought about it, that, that, that the synchronicity actions that happen, we look back and I always believe for myself that I'm at the right place at the right time. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a positive experience I'm having, but it's just like, okay, well, this is part of the path. 
This right. is part of where I'm supposed to be. I call it divine order. I don't. Also, yeah. Yeah. They also leave me with the strong impression that everything, uh, everything in creation is and has been connected from its very beginning. Right. And just because we don't have... Everything really is one. Right. And that time, as we uh, experience it in a linear fashion, really doesn't exist. We only experience the present, and the the past is just uh, in the mind, and the future is out there. But uh, if there is no past, present, and future, if everything is happening now, I guess you could call that the present, then this has some, some very difficult implications regarding free will and so forth and so on. But when you have people who have precognitive dreams, or people who see things that are happening and that are going to happen in the future, or right now, or, or, or see things that have happened in the past right now, or experience a life review during a near-death experience and seeing their whole life happening at once, then it would seem that uh, time as we know it uh, is, is an illusion, and that uh, everything is going on. It's almost like, uh, it's a poor analogy, but it, it puts across the idea that uh, a, at the Big Bang, a phonograph record was c- created, complete, with all the grooves. And we, because of the way our mind is constructed, uh, can only experience where the point of the needle uh, is on a particular groove. However, uh, our essence, uh, which people might call the soul or the spirit, sometimes, for some reason or other, ex- especially when it's a traumatic experience lying ahead, the essence can leave the physical body and travel ahead with these events that are already there, that are happening all at once, and report back the premonition of death, for example, is very, uh, very, very common, or something else. And when I've experienced what I call counter coincidences, and actually see the past as it's happening now, as it's happened to other people in my family as well, or see the future before it happens, but it's happening now, uh, these particular counter coincidences, I, as I call them, uh, teach me that. Uh, time is an illusion that everything really is now and that uh, we are so constructed that we only experience that little tiny point of the needle uh, on reality <laughs> at a time well you know um being a clairvoyant and a psychic myself ray i can i can assure you that when i have seen things for other people it always amazes me when these things happen exactly as as i had seen it to this day and i've, I've been that way all my life and uh, it, it, and I always thought there was, you know, it's, that, it's like that concept out there that I just can't quite wrap my mind around. And um, I want to get back to another point, though, that you made. Um, the One of the terms that I use when for some of these events that happen, the synchronicity, is I call it the bleed-through. Is that, yeah, I call it like a bleed-through when we have those moments in time where um, we're, we're experiencing something in those moments, and we're not quite sure what they are, but I call it bleed through. It's bleed through from the other reality yes. that, uh, that coexists with us. Right. And, you know, there are many people that experience that. They many, do. many. I mean, just everyday people, all kinds of people from all walks of life. You know, it's not just associated with a certain person in a certain type of a, a profession or born to a certain type of a family. It happens all the time to everyone everywhere. It's, it's just being aware. And I think that's part of what, what, what people need to understand is the subtleties in life are really is what's truly amazing to me. Yes, and what happens is uh, well, some people experience them more than others, uh, and some people you know, experience them once in a while. But the problem is, uh, is the social pressure to uh, you know, put down uh, experiences like this. Uh, uh, if I try to tell some people, uh, for example, uh, at church, some of the things that have happened to me, uh, they would probably say that, oh, that's... Uh, satanic, get away from that, or something like that. Or if I talk to a scientific friend, he would say, oh, those things can't possibly, possibly happen. Uh, right, because so science people... can't prove it. Hey, Ray, hang on to that thought, because I really would like to come back and, and finish that whole process up. You guys stay tuned, and we'll be back with more journeys and Ray Fowler. Hi, this is Rebecca, Journeys with Rebecca, Organic Health and Beauty. The name says it all. The finest health and beauty products on the planet. They're completely free of animal, synthetic, and petroleum ingredients. Fabulous guarantee. If you don't absolutely love it, get your money back, no questions asked. So log on to journeyswithrebecca.com and click on the Organic Health and Beauty link. Hi, this is Rebecca. Don't forget to visit my website. There you will find all the latest Journeys news, upcoming guests, and more. Log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. 
Have you ever had a reading and walked away wondering if you learned anything or been told to return time and again to resolve your problems? Seems like just anyone these days claims to be psychic. Rebecca Jernigan has been a professional psychic for over 15 years. She is certified by the American Association of Professional Psychics. Her growth continues and she hosts a radio show, is the author of Tarot, Meditation, and others. Discover your answers from a truly gifted and professional intuitive, Rebecca Jernigan. Call for your appointment at one 958 2768 That's one 958 2768 Or log on to her website at www.journeyswithrebecca.com. Find out where your life's journey will lead you. At Fate Magazine, they recognize the impossible can be possible. We explore the unknown so that it can be known. From personal accounts of ghosts and UFOs to scientific examination of psychic phenomena and earth mysteries, Fate's main purpose continues to be honest reporting and open discussion of the strange and the unknown. So log on to www.fatemag.com or call 1-800-728-2730. More than talk. It's entertaining insight and discoveries. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with Ray Fowler, and we are talking about his new book called Synchrophile. Now, that doesn't mean that um, we haven't mentioned a few of the other ones. You've written 10 books on UFOs and your death experience and stuff. But today we're going to talk about the syn- synchronicity or in the book Synchrophile. And, Ray, one of the things is, is um, we left off in the last segment where you were kind of talking about, you know, people and their understanding of when you communicate or try to communicate some of the things that have happened to you, how they would react to it, such as the people from your church and the scientific community. Um, you know, just because, um, you know, <laughs> belief, well, I've heard something one, some place, I wish I could remember exactly, so belief is not necessary for something to happen. Right. You know, it is what it is, even if we can't explain it. And well, everybody, everybody has their own world view. Oh, true. And that's the their truth. It builds a model of what they think the reality is, but over the years, they've at first accepted the model that they build as reality, but then after a time, after it's been challenged many times, even though they dig their heels in and try to retain that particular model, they have to tear it down and, and build another one. And uh, if you look at the history of science uh, from the uh, way, way back to Galileo, Copernicus, and so forth, and seeing the great changes that have come over in astronomy, for example. And it's the same thing uh, today. We, uh, the classical physics uh, is being challenged by quantum physics and uh, being torn apart the model that, that uh, physicists have held for years is being torn apart by the new physics. So... Um, they uh, are guilty of of of, of uh, the same same thing that uh, that uh, you know we, we accuse them of. We accuse them of not accepting something new, and uh, accept, they've done the same thing over and over again. They've rejected and rejected and rejected and accepted and accepted. It's it, it, you know the, the history of mankind as we we you know learn more. But unfortunately, some of these experiences are so bizarre and so are causal as far as synchronicity goes that uh, people. Uh, are locked out uh, when they try to uh, uh, describe these experiences. I'm just so happy that so many medical doctors now in this country and abroad are studying uh, paranormal phenomena, especially the near-death experience and, and uh, UFOs. But it took an awful long time to get out of the pages of the National Enquirer and into uh, the laboratory. Oh, how true is that? How true is that? Well, before I... There's some things that we want to cover. We, we talked about that when we were uh, on break. But before I do that, why don't we give just a couple of examples here, if you don't mind, of what synchronicity is, so that that people can start relating a little a little better out there as, as far as what we talk about. You have some specific um, um, written material here in your book. If you can maybe go through just a couple of them real quickly, because we're going to get into some other things sure. that I think is real important here. I'll, I'll try to summarize uh, one of them, uh, which was very meaningful to us, my wife. Uh, I married an English girl. Uh, she visited her mother, off and on in England. And her mother got to be 96 years old and uh, had to go to a nursing home, and she put her house up for sale. And uh, the first two people that bid on the house got the house. Margaret uh, went over to visit her in the nursing home, decided to go to the her old home, you know, where her mom and dad had lived. Her mother was no longer there, of course. She was in the nursing home and knocked on the door and... Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Howard Peach invited her in and, and uh, showed her around the house, the changes they've made and so forth, and asked Margaret where she was from. And 
Margaret said, just for a tiny, for, <clears throat> just from a tiny town in Massachusetts called Wenham. You've probably never heard of it. And, uh, Margie Peach said, uh, I've been there. And Margaret gasped and said, you have? And she said, well, where did you go? She said, uh, a relative on Friend Court. We lived on Friend Court. And then she said, Margaret says, well, where on Friend Court? Uh, number 16, right across the street from her. Uh, amazing. And not only that, she mentioned another relative who lived just four houses away from my son who had lived in Essex that time. The meaningful thing that came out of it, other than the tremendous shock and the almost uh, impossible statistic, statistics of this happening, uh, was the fact that Margaret's concern was alleviated about her mother being alone in the nursing home with no one to visit her except her brother once in a great while. These two people visited her mother every single week, bringing her various things that she needed and so forth. So that that was a uh, what I'd call a an archival, uh, amazing coincidence with meaning. And you know what then people say on the other side of that? It is a truly a small world after all. Yeah. But see, that tells us, in my opinion, that story, when I read that, I was like, that makes everyone feel better. Everyone feel better. It's like, okay, the, the right choices were made. I'm in the right place at the right time, and so is everyone else involved with this. Now, let me just give you a counter coincidence, which I call supernatural synchronisms. This is when the observer believes that such an event should coincide with the dictates of natural law, but they don't. They appear to operate outside the boundaries of reality that we normally experience. My wife went into the shed to get something uh, out of the shed, and she was under a, a very large A-shaped stepladder, which was hanging up. She hit something, and the ladder started to fall on her. She covered her head with her hands and waited to be hit, hit with a ladder. Nothing happened. She looked up. The ladder was not there. She looked over to her left, and the ladder was in the middle of the shed all set up. Uh, that is what I call a counter-coincidence. <laughs> and a number of these happen. Uh, yeah, and people think we're alone, huh, Ray? Yeah. <laughs> this is where you see that seems to be some unknown something uh, uh, using synchronicity is uh, to protect and to guide. Uh, and the numinosity that comes out of those experiences uh, is phenomenal sometimes because it really puts you in a connection with something uh, beyond that uh, seems to be helping. One more, if we have time, is I had a dog that was an outdoor dog, but we had to keep them inside during the winter time because it was cold and one very, very cold night. I okay, well, let's do this. Let's let's bring you back um, because we're out of time on this okay. segment. Let's bring you back, and then we're going to move into the next topic. You guys don't go away. We're going to be right back, and we're going to talk about more moments of synchronicity. Email Rebecca with your comments to mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with my guest, Ray Fowler, and we are talking about his new book, Synchrophile. You left off, left us hanging with the story <laughs> from the last segment, Ray. So let's go ahead and talk. We talked about your mother, or your wife's mother. Now you had a story about the dog. Yeah, he was an outside dog, but we brought him in in the winter because it was so cold. And uh, one very, very cold night, uh, I put a blanket uh, down on the cellar floor and let him lay down on it. He was a pretty old dog. And I uh, put a heater on uh, near him and uh, left him for the night. The next morning, I went down. The cellar was ice cold. And the dog had gotten up in the night. And uh, somehow, uh, when he got up, the blanket was draped over the heater. But the heater on the other side of the cellar was unplugged. And if that hadn't been unplugged, uh, the house could have set a fire. Uh, it was a really, really strange thing. Oh, my but goodness. But many strange things happened. I remember one time uh, I was in uh, the foyer of church, and uh, there was some special needs uh, brownies, uh, miniature Girl Scouts. <laughs> I call them midget digits. Uh, huh. were there. And one of them came up to me and looked up at me and parted her lips and started making a kissing sound like she wanted me to come down there and kiss her. Well, I, I felt very embarrassed. I, I didn't know if I should do this or not. While I'm thinking about this, I feel two strong hands uh, grab my shoulders from behind and push me toward her. I thought it was must have been the scoutmaster or something, and I just went went with the flow. I just went right down as it pushed me, and, and uh, she gave me a big kiss. And I looked up to turn around and see who it was, and there was a wall about maybe 10 inches from me. There was no one there. And you say, well, what on earth was that? <laughs> <laughs> so these strange things uh, happened. Uh, I have apnea, 
uh, a very mild case of that where I, I just stop breathing just for a moment and I wake up with a sort of a snort, you know. And uh, One night I'm right in the middle of a pleasant dream being in high school and in my homeroom class with Mr. Nolan and all of a sudden I feel something grab my left hand and jerk me so hard that I sit right up and I look up and there's a glowing image of not the full body but maybe from the waist up of my mother and the mother's voice says, Buster, you stopped breathing. Now, I think something happened after that. I can't remember. I think there was some kind of a conversation. But then I was back in my dream again uh, with uh, Mr. Nolan. Uh, really incredible. Uh, so you, you have these after-death communication things. I think some of the amazing things that have happened is when I felt my father close, and uh, I asked him if he would, because he had all kinds of experiences like this. And uh, I, I said, you know, if you're here, you know, let me know. And uh, we went to bed to tell my wife this, because she's really upset about these things. But in any event, we went to bed. The next morning, we woke up. The house was bitterly cold. I went down. The furnace was out. I said, oh, the furnace is broken down. I better go up and turn off, turn the emergency switch, switch off and to call someone. I went up. The emergency switch had been turned off. Neither of us had touched it. So it seemed that uh, the only thing that I could connect it with was this is the way he was telling me. The next time this happened, uh, uh, I get up in the morning, and I went to get something out of my uh, top bureau drawer, and there was my father's picture looking at me, which was for that, buried under a bunch of junk. Uh, the last time, which happened not too long ago, was I, I again, had asked if he would uh, somehow let me know if he was really there. And I had a clock in my study, which was not too far from the bedroom, which I never set the alarm for, very rarely use it. And it went off at midnight. My wristwatch, which I never set, uh, went off at midnight. Both of them were going at the same time, and the doorbell started ringing downstairs at the same time. <laughs> so <laughs> I think he was saying, what have I got to do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd tap dance for you, but you'd probably get frightened because you couldn't see me, but you could hear me. <laughs> Isn't that great? You so know, all and these things happen, and I call them uh, counter coincidences. There have been other cases, you know, where uh, I separate these coincidences into current coincidences, those that are happen at once, and the corresponding coincidences that there's a little time between them, and converging coincidences, which happen uh, uh, after a, a long period of time. But uh, sometimes they've helped me with my uh, UFO investigations. I remember I had an investigation that I had to go to after work uh, at Canterbury, New Hampshire. I'd never been there. And uh, I usually brought my, my lunch with me and uh, on these investigations, and I drove uh, into the almost into the town of Canterbury on this country road and was eating my lunch, thinking to myself, how am I going to find this guy that I'm supposed to interview? And uh, down the road comes this old fellow and, and uh, knocks on the window, asks if I had car trouble, and uh, I said, no, no, I'm just having my lunch. And then I thought, well, I'll ask him if he knows this fellow. And he said, oh, Jim Lilly works for me. I'm his boss. <laughs> My name is Arthur Stavros. It turned out that both of them were a two-man company in Canterbury, and, of course, he gave me excellent directions to the house. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, I needed some information from the Air Force concerning uh, Air Force uh, flare drops. I thought they'd never cooperate with me, but I I wanted to find out, so I placed a call to Westover Air Force Base, and I was connected with uh, uh, Captain Belay, Assistant Chief of Operations Division. When I gave my name to the captain, he says, Oh, I've got incident and exit here. I'm just reading about you. So it was that connection that uh, he was able to uh, uh, have pity on me and against really Air Force regulations and got all the uh, twixes or uh, uh, faxes from all the sack, sack bases about Air Force flare drops for me. Shortly <laughs> after that, the Air Force uh, information at the Pentagon sent a met- message to all the Air Force bases not to cooperate with me. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the poor guy. I hope they didn't do too much to him. <laughs> well... <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is we're almost out of time in this, this segment, Ray. We're going to bring you back. We're going to talk a little bit more um, about some of the um, chapters in your book on Synchrophile and share a few more experiences let people know how to get the book. So hang on. We'll be right back. An intuitive touch. Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We're here with Ray Fowler. And we are talking about Synchrophile. That's the name of his book. And, of course, it's about synchronicity. Um, what a delightful, delightful, delightful 
time I've been having here with you today, uh, talking about different different parts of people's lives, which is, you know, your life in this instance, and all the different aspects of synchronicity. I recommend this particular book to anybody just so that they can relate it to um, what's going on in their own life, uh, Ray. I truly do. Now, um, let's talk a little bit. Your, your book isn't just about little little bits and pieces like we were talking about. I mean, you go into um, UFO abduction dreams and synchronicity. Um, you talk about metaphysical musings. I mean, that's part of that's some of the ones. Other faces of synchronicity. There's there's all kinds of information in here. So for those people, Ray, that are, are a big, huge fan of yours in regards to your UFO things, they can also, you know, talk about get into some of the more paranormal aspects of this as well. So maybe you might want to go ahead and kind of give people a little bit of idea about how you're, you you put a lot of the paranormal synchronicity in there in regards to maybe some UFO things. Well, one of the chapters uh, is entitled Stigmatic Synchronicity, and that's where uh, UFO abductees, including myself, will have a dream, for example, of uh, being taken uh, and put on an operating table, and uh, some operations being done on them. Uh, and when they wake up the next morning, uh, the dream seems realer than a dream, number one. Number two, where they have uh, a uh, wound in their dream, there's blood uh, on the pillow, uh, maybe from the nose. If the uh, uh, entities were doing something to the nose, if the blood there. So you have this uh, synchronicity. Uh, a dream that seems really real, and then you have a corresponding coincidence of uh, the blood matching the operation that was being done uh, on the on the person. Uh, there is also what I call a clock coincidence, where uh, an abductee wakes up with a start and sees the clock one 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 two 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 three 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 four 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 five 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 after one of these uh, abduction dreams. And my take on that is that it's similar to a ploy that a hypnotist would use uh, when a person is under hypnosis. Uh, uh, he may have uh, something he does with his fingers or a word he would say and so forth after he had hypnotized this person a lot. And they would just immediately, after seeing this uh, sign, go right into hypnosis. And I think that maybe these clock coincidences are the same, that when you see the clock read 111, you'll forget what has uh, happened uh, who you okay I, I'm going to stop you right there um, I, I have uh, mine is 11 11 and 1 11 that's that seems to be a, a statement throughout my life 1 1 11 or 11 11 um, I remember having a dream where I was uh, on board a ship I wasn't operated on but I was on board a ship and I was talking to other people other beings they weren't like all of them necessarily humans um, that's my only um, recall, I, as a child, I used to have a, 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 an enormous amount of nosebleeds. Um, I moved from my original home state, which is in Michigan. I'm now in the Midwest. And since I moved, I have not had any any more nosebleeds. I haven't had any incidences like that. But I do wake up frequently at that 11-11 or 1-11 time frame. Would this, would this be correlating with, with uh, perhaps an abduction well, another theory that has been advanced by psychologists is that if one had a, a traumatic experience in the past at those times, that the body at those times would suddenly uh, become very defensive and wake a person up to defend himself. Uh, oh, another, that brings up a whole other set of issues there. Now, doesn't you know, it? <laughs> I know when it first started happening to me, I finally, after trying to uh, discover what was causing it, couldn't. I asked whatever it was to wake me up at one a twelve twelve one 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 two 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 three 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 four 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 five five five, and that night I did. <laughs> and I felt that was that was a crazy coincidence. I'll ask again, and, and it happened again. <laughs> oh my goodness! So it was really strange. <laughs> oh my god! What was going on? And I talked to for, huh? I talked to so many other people who have these uh, uh, this clock coincidence type of. Uh, I have a whole chapter on clock coincidence. Yes, you do, and it's 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 just amazing and that was uh, part of I was actually in a public place I was having my car repaired and I was reading your book and I was giggling and, and people must have thought I was reading some kind of a comedy and it wasn't it was just because I was yeah, I can relate to that I've been there uh huh uh huh and it was just kind of cute it really was um, I, I, I really recommend this book I honestly do for anybody because it helps to make some sense out of 
the, the things that happen to us, some people call them coincidence. I don't believe in that particular word, but I do believe in the synchronicity of it. But, Ray, before we run out of time here in this segment, boy, it's just never enough time, is there? I want to I wanna direct everyone to, first of all, is your website. Uh, they can reach that by going to my website, journeyswithrebecca.com. And then underneath there, uh, your picture, there will be a hot link, what I call a hot link. They just click onto it and it takes them to your website. Now, I need to know from you, how can people get a hold of not only this book, but all of the other previous books that you've written? Well, all of the other previous books are on that website, uh, giving instructions how you can get autographed uh, copies directly from me. Or you can go to uh, Amazon.com or a Barnes & Noble or any of the Internet uh, uh, online bookstores. Uh, they will have the current ones. But I do have lots of copies for the ones that are out of print, uh, brand new copies. So depending upon uh, whether which way you want to go, you can get it from going to uh, Rebecca's uh, website or anything. So to uh, the internet bookstores or oh. for your own bookstores. There you go. Now it's RaymondFowler.cjb.net for those of you who want to go directly to his website. Raymond, thank you so much for sharing so much of your life with us. We appreciate it so much. Great journey, Rebecca. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Find out more about a show topic or guest. Log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to JWR Radio. I'd like to thank my guests tonight for sharing their wonderful information and knowledge with us. And a special thanks goes out to you, the listeners. Now, you know, the guests I have on air are given the opportunity to share their viewpoint or ideas. Now you and I have the opportunity of choice in regards to those ideas or viewpoints. Be sure to check in next week for more enlightening educational talk and discoveries. This is Rebecca of Journeys with Rebecca. Until we meet again, where will your life's journey take you? Many blessings and good night. <laughs>